Hi, this is Mr. Anderson in the second Life on Earth podcast on classification. When we're talking about classification, we have to talk about this guy, Carolus Linnaeus, or we'll just call him Carl. Carl was a Swedish botanist, and basically what he liked to do is discover new species, name them, classify them. And so if you're familiar with like order and class and species, this all comes from Linnaeus. We call this our Linnaean uh, classification system. And so if we play this through time, way back in 1735, Linnaeus develops this. It basically, he would classify life as vegetable or animal. Um, if we play this forward in time, we've had a number of different taxonomists who've come up with different systems. So we've added things like protists, prokaryotes, monarins, and now finally we have a three domain naming system today. And this will probably change in the future. But we have another Carl, Carl Woese, who's come up with this idea of how to classify life. So we've gone Carl to Carl and changed quite a bit, especially with technology that we have. But we've also made a huge shift because Carolus Linnaeus didn't believe Darwin was right. He didn't believe in evolution. And now we build our whole naming system on the idea of natural selection and evolution over time. And so the goal in classification today is to have monophyletic naming and monophyletic groups. And so what does that mean? Well, basically right here we've got a phylogenetic tree. And so what we want to create is what is called a monophyletic grouping. So if we look at this group right here, we want this whole group here, all the individuals inside here, to share this common ancestor and to not leave anything out. In other words, we want to make sure that we're putting, you know, if, if birds were to be classified as mammals, that would screw everything up. So we want it to be in one big group. And we want our naming system to kind of reflect that. And so as we go from this huge tree of life, so if we go from this first tree of life where we branch it off to um, bacteria and archaea and eukarya, we want this naming system to keep going along with this phylogenetic tree of life. And so ironically, the Linnaean system is used to basically classify life according to the work of Darwin. And so the problem with that is this. If you look at these two plants, this plant here and this plant here, Linnaeus would have picked both those up and said, let's classify those in the same group because they look a lot alike. But the reason they look a lot alike is they've convergently evolved. In other words, they look the same because they fill the same niche or they fill the same role. If we were to look at this pill bug and this pill millipede, you would say they're classified the same. Let's put them in the same group. However, they're not related at all. They just look the way they do because of the environmental pressures that make them look that way. And so that's why Linnaeus had a problem. That's why scientists for a long period of time have had this problem on grouping individuals according to the way they look. But the, the rescuer in this whole thing is DNA and genetic material. In other words, we can look at the DNA of individuals now, or in this case, we're looking at the, uh, this is two-dimensional protein uh, electrophoresis, so we're actually separating proteins. And so we can look at how similar they are and we can see, oh, we're more related to a chimpanzee than a gorilla and a orangutan. And we can even lay out this phylogenetic tree. Once we've done that, then classification kind of comes right after that. And so basically the system of classification is giving each organism on our planet a specific name. And that name is based on binomial nomenclature. So all living things get two names, a genus and a species. And so you are Homo sapiens, but a wolf is Canis lupus. So what is this organism right here? Well, you might know this as a cougar or a mountain lion or a puma. You might know it by one of the 40 different names that it has. And I'm not even including different languages. And so the problem in science is coming up with a standard naming system. So in the literature, when we're talking about a mountain lion, we know exactly what we're talking about. And so basically, this is the way we classify life. We classify life from life all the way down to species. And so if you've been in biology for a while, you know this. I remember this in my head. Dumb King Philip came over from German soil. So I can just say that without reading it here because I've learned, we'll pretend that this is dumb King Philip came over from German soil. It's just a way for you to memorize all the different divisions in the classification system. And so that is domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. And so when we talk about the scientific name, then we're talking about this last two right here. And so let's go through the mountain lion. So it's alive, so it's classified as a living thing. It's in the domain eukarya, that means it has you know, a nucleus inside that. 
it's an animal, it's a chordate, so it's got a spinal cord, it's a mammal, it's carnivore, it's, it's a cat, and it's puma concular. And so that's going to be its scientific name. So when we write out what is this, all scientists are going to write this out as puma concular. And so that is its scientific name, or we might just abbreviate it as this in the literature. We also, I can't do this in my writing, have to write this in italics to represent it as that. And so all living things on our, on our planet that we've identified as a species is classified according to this system. Now the problem right now is that the biodiversity on our planet is really depleting quickly. And so we have species going extinct faster than we can actually name them. Um, but what is the naming system? It's based in Latin and there have been some kind of changes on that uh, over time. But basically, that's our classification system. Again, it reflects evolution. It tries to be monophyletic. But again, it's a, it's a science that's rapidly changing as technology kind of catches up with it. And I hope that's helpful.